Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and I welcome all of you back to another episode of EastEnders. This is the one that sort of culminates after... If, if, the epi if the previous episode was just kind of like a very blandish sort of in-between to get to this episode, then I suppose that's fair enough, because... Well, let's 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 do like the worst uh, till the best. Uh, we'll, we'll 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 go in that order. Um, the thing involving the Panasars now is that, well, the focus is still a little bit on Vinny, and it's become a little bit obvious that it was basically just pity sex that w was what Dotty had with with Vinny. I, I'm assuming that the show just doesn't want to call Dotty a slut or anything like that, but. They, it really, it, 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 to be fair, it is more of pity sex than I would say for, than anything else. Um, Vinny, and also, nothing ever good on this show apparently ever seems to happen with Whitney somehow becoming involved in a discussion and being, as always, no real help to anyone. I, I'm serious about this. Suki is in shot. Whitney comes over, just talks a dot saying that, was Vinny at you? She was talking loudly enough in the earshot of Suki about Vinny, and Whitney just comes out with some bullshit like the best relationships come out of friendships and that. And of course, Suki just reverts back to her old ways, saying that Vinny does not need this right now. I know, again, we're sort of like back to square one when it comes to Suki, but what's Vinny, what's Whitney got to do with this? You know, she just says this for no reason, just to invoke a reaction. So, Vinny and Dotty talk, like, later on, and they discuss sort of, like, how it's not really meant to be, and that's kind of, like, the end of that. The other thing I need to point out, and realistically I should have talked about this first, is that Mila and Ikra actually do just make up their resolute make-up. Despite the fact, I mean, Mila's quote, what was, what was it Mila said? That it doesn't really matter that you had the right to call, my, call the police on my mother. I just wish you told me first. Which, first of all, so now Mila's mad just because Ikra didn't tell Mila that she was going to ring the police. Even though Mila said that she didn't want the police rang because she thought her mother was actually still a good person underneath. Um, that's not really... You weren't like that several weeks ago, love. That's that's a really half-baked excuse now as to why you're okay with all this. And the two are apparently just back on normal terms. Oh, and also, um, Mila managed to, you know, you know, convince the social worker that she, she was going to be the one taking care of, you know, Kyu as well. So it rendered this entire fallout between Ikra and Mila completely pointless. Fantastic, isn't it? Also, can I just make a very urgent point about Milo and, you know, Ikra's relationship? Just, I want to make something very... I just want to say this right now. Remind me again why these two like each other in the first place. Or rather, what chemistry do they actually share? I know there's probably, like, something I'm not seeing, but from what I've seen... It just seems as if, like, they just, I don't know, just start talking to each other and then they just sort of, like, decided, well, Kim was the one who, like, really wanted to, you know, really force them together. Because that's, that's the problem when the show just forces people to be together who share no real interest. Exactly. I just, I, I, I seriously just have no idea what this why this is supposed to be like the way it is. I just, I don't understand it. And well, maybe I'll go back and rewatch some of the earlier ones between Mila and, uh, you know, Ikra's relationship, but I'm sorry. I just, I don't know what I'm missing out. I don't know if I'm missing out on something or whether or not I'm just being right because what is there? Uh, am I missing something? I, I just don't know. So following up from this, that Isaac basically sort of goes a little bit off the rails and confronts Ruby and, well, Jean just so happens to be in the cleaning with Ruby in her office. And Isaac sort of just locks them in and demands that Ruby confesses that she knew or she was coming up for Paul's murder. 
Ruby immediately says no, and Isaac just shuts the door and starts talking about conspiracies. I mean, no offense to Isaac, but what exactly was his plan again? To keep Ruby locked in her office until she got a confession, but what if Ruby just didn't confess? So what would happen after that? I mean, Isaac wasn't carrying a weapon or anything like that. And, well, Lola... Well, here's the thing. Uh, Pat apparently manages to find uh, all of Isaac's stolen uh, uh, possessions of Johnny Allen's books and all that. She could, conf- And he confronts Lola about this. And Denise, all this while, just kind of like stands in the background, just saying the most blanket statements that you would possibly expect someone to just stand in the background to say, saying, what's going on? Can somebody tell me what's going on? What's wrong with Isaac? I know, listen, I know fine well that, you know, situations like these and that, and if you, I don't know what else you would, I was expecting like Denise to say now that she's just hearing this for the first time, but come on, like anything else, just think about saying anything else or at least, you know, and then Kim just comes in, you know, uh, dressed like she's just about to uh, travel to Paris. And she actually says something quite useful is that she says she's you know, off to rubies and that. And basically that confirms to everyone about what Isaac's doing. They all go down. Ruby, well, it's more Jean manages to convince Isaac to, you know, go outside for a walk. And Isaac gets confronted by his family and... Well, Isaac's jig is up, and he's not arrested or anything, but they're just going to take him home just so they can put him back on his medication. Good to know that Isaac's plan was a complete failure because, to be honest, well, I can't say it was a failure. He didn't have one in the first place. And realistically, ladies and gentlemen, that's kind of the episode. It's just, it feels as if, like, the Isaac uh, obsessing over Paul's murder was just sort of like... It came to a very abruptish end. Uh, the thing about Vinny... Oh, yeah, well, hang on. There is one more. Uh, Bernadette manages to lose three more pounds. Uh, Rainy looks like she's just about to kill Bernadette. I mean, like, really, just smile, Rainy. You know, you know how hard it is to actually lose three pounds? And the show is painting almost like a figure that losing three pounds means absolutely, like, it's not even worth thinking about. Considering what my weight loss journey has been like over the last couple of weeks, that is a tremendous effort in itself. And this makes no difference anyway, because Rainey and Stuart decide that Bernadette was going to be the surrogate mother. And we also find out that Bernadette is probably going to be afraid on three separate installments, as opposed to the one big installment that she had sort of like hoped for. It made me sort of like realize a little bit that maybe what Bernadette was planning to do was just to receive the one payment and then terminate the fetus almost at the word go. But it doesn't seem like that's going to be the case. So whether or not the baby's health is going to be affected by, you know, the weight saving tablets or anything like that will have to remain to be seen. If, you know, if the writers can think of any decent excuse as to why they should invest any time or effort that's the thing if there was like more time or effort into some of these stories i reckon they could have like done a little bit more of them i can't help but feel as if like some of these episodes are just sort of cobbled together at the very last minute and then just pushed out there and also there's an issue in just in terms of you, you realize that a lot of things were kind of like discussed, resolved, brought up in this episode. But it just, it mean it registers almost nothing. Because, I don't know, I don't know if it's the acting or the directing, but there's something about this show that I'm just straight up not interested in. I'll have to like come back to what this is maybe later because... I know it's a soap opera, I know it's a television, but... And it's supposed to be, like, televising real life or stuff like that, or scripting real life, but it seems just a little too staged. Like, it is a little bit too artificial. But I'll go back to... I'll try and explain this, like, in maybe some other later video. So, for what it was worth, I hope you guys have enjoyed this reaction video, well, this 
analysis of this tonight's episode of EastEnders, and I will hope to see all of you guys again in the next video. Take care, bye-bye for now.